Hello everyone, this is Jotto, and welcome to another deck tech. Yes, now for this one we're going to be going completely opposite to the last video I did, and covering Hermelian Green. Now, Hermelian Green is um, one of my favorite decks of recent times, actually. Now that I think about it, it's a very simple deck, it's a green aggressive deck using Hermelian for combo kills. So, what we're going to do is talk a little bit about the hero power first, because I think that's a really important element of this deck. Now, Hermelian's ability, Tireless March, lets you pay up to four. I mean, pay up to three, but it's one plus. So you pay up to four, that almost never happens. It's usually one or two creatures you're targeting. You ready all the creatures you targeted and restore their HP, and then you move to deploy. That means you get to attack a second time. That's huge. Now, something to note, Hermelian requires double order, and this is a two-color deck, which means, well, either three levels or the fancy, fancy Sunblessed Fields. Now, Sunblessed Fields lets you convert levels, which means you can play this as your green or order level, and then later on in the game, you can convert your green level into an order level for the combo kill, where you place down a buff, attack twice, get tons of damage in, and that's basically how you play Hermelian consistently in a two-level green aggressive deck. And it works. It works really well. Um, the Sunbless Fields, you need to get one in your early turns, but the secondary ability is also nice, being able to put Might Emblems or Shield Emblems, not as a combat trick, has to be pre-combat, also handy. So, in general, very strong shrine, and is the reason you can even play Hermelian in this deck. Now, onto the cards. Uh, we'll start with the green curve. Very, very low curve. We've got Elf Scout, 1-1, one, one, 4 speed. One of the best one drops in the game. Uh, one one doesn't seem too significant, but it helps you get on board early and often, which is important. And with combat tricks, it lets you snipe two drops. And it works with Deogen, which we'll get to later. Very important target for Deogen, actually. Silverfang, Elf Warrior, both two two three speed. Solid stat line. Silverfang is, as a creature, objectively better in this deck because there's no Elf synergy. And it gets deadly against uh, evil creatures, which are Rage, Dominion, and Corruption creatures, of course. However, it's legendary. Now, the fact that it's legendary means you don't want to draw two. And that's the reason why almost every green aggressive deck plays four Elf Warrior and three Silver Fang. Because you want seven, and you don't want four Silver Fang. That's basically what that's about. Silver Fang is better, but Elf Warrior is not legendary. Um, so yeah, very simple two drops. The slightly more interesting of the three two drops is the Jungle Death Trap. 4-4, four, four, one speed, whenever your opponent plays or summons a creature of level 2 or less, you sacrifice Death Trap and destroy those creatures. Now, Death Trap has some weird interactions where if you summon multiple things at once, at the same time, exactly same time, it'll kill all of them. However, if a creature when it enters play, triggers something to come into play from the deck. That's not considered the exact same time, so Death Trap will not kill all of them. This comes up the most with Eternal Servants. Eternal Servants, when you play it, its trigger says play something from your graveyard or um, deck. Now, unfortunately for Death Trap, that means that the first 1-1 one -one kills the Death Trap and the second 1-1 one -one survives. However, aside from stuff like that, Death Trap is a 4-4, which means against control decks with few creatures, it's very difficult to deal with, and they often don't have creatures to play to kill the death traps. And in mid-rangey matchups, often it will slow down your opponent's early game, and they have less early game than you, or they might need to spend three mana on a creature to kill it, which means they're down on tempo. And if they don't have a creature, they're going to die to Death Trap. Because remember, you're playing Hermelian. Death Trap is incredibly dangerous. You put one Amber Strike on it, that's a 6-6. Six, six. Hermelian, 12 damage. 12 damage with two cards. So they have to kill this Death Trap. And Death Trap is very hard for them to deal with. So, solid card. Has its weaknesses? You really don't want Death Trap in Corruption matches in particular. But yes, very strong card in general. Now onto the set of three drops, starting with Unicorn. Unicorn's quite simple. 
2-2, two, 3-speed, two, very common stat line in this deck. Two levels, when you play it, destroy a spell. There aren't actually that many spells that Unicorn targets that often because you have other spell destruction and a lot of spells aren't that dangerous. The main thing it targets is Burning Rage. Often, you can't keep a creature in play against Burning Rage to use your symbol on, which means Unicorn is how you get out. But only two because, well, you do have access to symbol. So... Decent stat line, spell destruction against primarily Burning Rage. There are a few other spells around, like Tombs, but that's not too dangerous for this type of deck. So, solid creature. CFC, Cavalry Field Captain. Uh, the Order 3 drop. Again, 2-2, two, two, 3 speed, common uh, through line there. When you play it, you can temporarily buff something for plus 1, plus 1, plus 1 until end of turn. This works very well with Elf Scout because it makes it into a 2-2, two, two, which actually kills... Every other one drop in the game, I think, as far as I'm aware. Anyway, all the played ones. And it also kills a lot of two drops. So that's a nice tempo trade. It also buffs your two drops to 3-3 three, three, for speed, which nothing can block. And will usually just kill something without trading. So very, very nice card. Lets you speed boost through blockers, although most of your stuff is high speed anyway, so they can't block it regardless. But the buff, very, very nice. Then, for the uh, last of the early game creatures, we have Reincarnation Spirit. 3 mana, flying, 2-2, two, two, 3 speed, and when it's in the graveyard, you can play it from your graveyard with a Might Emblem on it. And when it dies with the Might Emblem, it shuffles, so you only have to do it once. The key thing with this is it works with Deogen. It also works nicely on Curve, because remember those Sunbless fields, you can go turn 1, Elf Scout, turn 2, Silver Fang, Convert level, turn 3 spirit. So it actually works with curve as well. But the nice thing about this is it gives you some sustain through removal. It also gives you a flying attacker. Keep in mind, you've got combo kills. So having something they can't attack on their turn is quite dangerous. And its other application is it's a Valor target with Deogen. Because Deogen gives, or Diogen, or however the hell you pronounce this. But anyway, Deogen gives your... Level 1 non summoned creatures, Valor. So you get to put my emblems down. And Reincarnation Spirit in your graveyard still has Valor. So you can summon it, and it's an extra Valor usage when you're low on cards. Very, very nice use there. It is a bit expensive for this deck because it often will be a 3 mana 2 level card because you're playing on turn 4 effectively. So it's a little slow, that's why you don't play 4. Um, essentially, that's the rundown for that. On to the, the big creatures. <laughs> big being uh, relative in this kind of situation. Deogen, legendary with four copies, because he is that good. So, three mana, two levels, one of each. One of the main reasons to play this color combo, actually. Two, three, two speed, okay stats. When he enters the field, you can return a card with cost one or less from your graveyard to your hand. Now, this is often a shrine... <laughs> which is effectively plus one card, keep in mind. But anyway, it's often a shrine, but it also can get you back Elf Scouts, which have Valor with Deogen in play. It can get you back your Combat Trick, Ambush Strike. It can get Tidal Wave back as a card draw or removal spell, or to uh, give you that extra removal of a blocker. So bring it back, attack it, or send it back so you can attack past it. Very, very nice toolbox there for Deogen. And, as I mentioned earlier, non summon creatures that are level one, which, if you notice, is most of the deck, aside from CFC, Unicorn, and soon to uh, cover Haldir Rider, get Valor. Which gives you a mid-to-late game usage for your Elf Warriors and your Silver Fangs, Death Traps, and importantly, Elf Scout. Makes all of these good late, and Reincarnation Spirit turns from being a decent value play into an amazing one. So very, very nice synergy with this deck. It's a hair slower than you might like, but... You don't need to be that much faster than your opponent, you just need to be fast enough to get your final attack in. Haldir Rider is the top of the curve for this. Uh, 4 mana, 2 levels, 3-2, three, 3 speed, with Swift. Not played that much anymore, uh, since it got its health nerf a long, long, long time ago, because it used to be a 3-3 three, three and was primarily used for creature combat back then. But nowadays, it's an aggressive play, gets 3 damage in, mostly helps applying pressure, but usually isn't used to kill that often. It's mostly used to help 
bring their health down so you can get a combo kill. Most of the combo kills are done on smaller creatures with buffs instead of the larger creatures. Although, if you go into a really long game and you've got a lot of mana, you can go Haldiri, Symbol, Hermelian. That's 8 mana, 12 damage. So, if you do get into those long games, you can do that. That's another way through. Now, lastly, well, aside from shrines, I suppose, lastly, we're going to cover the spells. Three main spells, mentioned all three so far. Ambush Strike, one of the best combat tricks in the game. One mana, instant speed, plus two, plus two. It's essentially like, well, it's basically like fumes, to be honest, but you can't use it as a removal spell. However, you can use it for combo kills, because plus two, plus two when you ready it again to get that second attack is effectively plus four plus four. That's where a lot of this damage comes from. The other buff in the deck is Symbol of Growth. Two mana, two levels, you get plus three plus one on a creature until end of turn and unstoppable, that can be relevant. It's not instant, so you have to do this beforehand, which can be a bit annoying. And play boost, you pay an extra one, you can either destroy a non-creature card when you hit them, that's important, or summon a Shooting Sprout. Shooting Sprout being a 0 1 2 speed that doubles all modifiers. So if you ambush strike it, it gets plus 4 plus 4. If you put a weakness emblem on it, it gets minus 2 minus 2. When you look at this, you might think, oh, Shooting Sprout, that works really well with the buffs. You'd be correct. It doesn't come up that often, though. Usually, similar growth is used to disrupt your opponent's game plan by destroying spells or as a way of killing quickly because it's worth 6 damage with Hermelian. It's not often used for Shooting Sprout. Keep in mind, you're not obligated to use the play boost. Sometimes it is just a 2 mana buff. And if you want to take any tips from this, I would say don't tunnel vision on getting Shooting Sprouts. It can be good. But in practice, a 0-1 with 2 speed is very easy to kill. So Shooting Sprout doesn't often come out to play. Last card in the deck is Tidal Wave. Now, Tidal Wave is a very versatile card. One mana, two levels. You get to move an enemy creature to the support line or vice versa. And draw a card. Drawing a card, very nice. Lets you keep velocity up where you're gaining tempo and card advantage. It also lets you get past things like Wool in the North and deal with stuff like Harpy. So, Tidal Wave, very useful. You can get them back with Deogens. Lets you effectively draw cards with Deogen. Very, very nice, versatile spell. But that's pretty much the whole list. It's very, very simple. Uh, shrines, 17. Get the exact numbers. 5 order, 7 nature. Uh, reason for this is because you want to start nature, but in reality, you really want to start some blessed fields. Uh, so you want to start nature. You don't need order until turn 3, usually. But some blessed fields operates as both, so that helps a lot, and the single valley. Now, in terms of tech options that I've either looked at or not been too impressed with or haven't tested, and maybe you should, uh, going up to 4 Reincarnation might be worth a look. Uh, the In terms of spells, Tornado Outbreak was trying it for a while. In fact, if you're playing this in Conquest as Vanguard, who was the one who essentially gave me the original version of this list and I just tweaked it a little bit, uh, was playing Tornado Outbreaks because of Conquest restrictions. So, Tidal Wave is essentially better, but Tornado Outbreak does have its uses. Uh, Test of Time, I would say, is too slow for this. I would rather just play more Unicorns if you're facing that kind of situation. Call of Yulai is an interesting one. You can use it for consistency boosting, but fitting it into the deck, easier said than done. Also, it only gets your Nature 2 drops, and in practice, you don't really want to be using them past your early turns anyway. So the question is, is it worth the risk of drawing them late game when you really don't want them? And that's kind of the, uh, the through line you've got to thread there. Landslide can be potentially good. Uh, I would say in this metagame, not so much. But in some metagames, Landslide's actually very, very strong. So maybe have a look at that. Now, in terms of the order side of things, Radiance... Keep in mind, you can go double order fairly easily, but right now, there aren't that many creature decks that can test you very much, and I would say if you want to look at a Holy Radiance or Melian deck, it's probably better to play Priests. Uh, so, Radiance, powerful card, but same thing there. Trigon, I would say, is a hair too slow, because you want to be using your first turn for an Elf Scout if possible, 
And if you miss your first turn with Trigon, that's rough. So I would not say Trigon's that useful. I would say Sunless Field is the better shrine for tempo related decks because well there's no downside so i would say some shrine is the uh the better alternative there now other things i have thought of are symbol of faith and pegasus regiment because uh, they can both be got back with deirdrim i would argue there's not enough aggro decks that race you for symbol of faith there are aggro decks around but they don't race you it's kind of like whoever wins on board will then win it's not like um aggressive rage decks where it's a race to who can kill each other first and that's what symbol of faith is good at so i would not say it's where you want to be right now pegasus regiment i think is just a little too slow it's an amazing value play like the agent pegasus is a crazy value engine but other decks have better value engines and Frankly, you should be trying to race kill instead of contesting value in most matchups. There are matchups, and that's not the case, but they are few and far between. Same goes for things like Cleanse. Uh, cleanse is a one-for-one one that works really well with Deogen, but it's too slow. I think there are better Kayanu decks if you want to run this color combo with uh, Cleanses and such, and it's not really in uh, the Hermelian side of things. Now, the last card I want to have a look at a bit is Primal Battle. The reason I haven't included Primal Battle is twofold. Well, one, if you're playing Conquest, Primal Battle, highly contested card. You can only get four across three decks. It's going to be hard to squeeze it in. But even in the latter version, I haven't been playing it. And it's primarily just because there are less big creatures in this deck than you think. So I would rather push damage and consistency than using Primal Battle... It only really works with Death Trap in this deck, or maybe Combat Tricks. That's about it. So yeah, I'm not trying Primal Battle because it's often quite clunky. It's surprisingly clunky in uh, in this particular deck, because you simply don't have high HP numbers to work around with. The only thing that will get large enough to maybe use with it is Deogen or Death Trap, so it's tough to justify Primal Battle. I'd rather just be using Amber Strikes or Tidal Waves to get through damage instead of uh, worrying about removal. But anyway... Uh, that's the entire deck. It's been very good. I did quite well with it on ladder and I've been doing very well with it in tournaments. I would say it's one of the premier aggressive decks in the format right now that isn't corruption. There are other decks that are not corruption that are more aggressive sided, but they're a little slower than this. Um, so things to look at would be stuff like Care Bears, the Reverence uh, Order decks, but they're a little slower, more mid-rangey, whereas this is a straight-up aggro... It's like an aggro combo deck, basically. You're an aggressive deck who's trying to get a combo kill out of nowhere. That's essentially how I define the style of this deck, and it's very, very tough for some decks to deal with. It does struggle with two types of decks. One is decks that can keep up with you removal-wise, because keep in mind... Death Trap is pretty much your only resilient threat to removal spells. So it does struggle a little bit with those decks and it really just has to outspeed them. The other thing it struggles with is creature-based decks that are good at fighting other creature decks. Like, well, Mortar, essentially. Uh, Mortar is really good against this and Mono Dominion can cause some issues because of Helm and uh, Runic Blades along with Scarabs being effectively a one-for-one -one trade of mana and cards for Death Trap. So those are the decks to watch out for, but it's really good at punishing control decks. It's really good at punishing those slower mid-rangey decks, of which there are quite a few. So solid deck, I would highly recommend it. But anyway, that's all I've got uh, for now. The deck list will be in the description, as will the link to the Spellwaver Discord, which I have fixed. I got informed that the one on the last video was broken. I have gone back and fixed that since the link timed out. So if you've got any questions, put it in the comment section below, or just go on the Spellwaver Discord and hit me up with a message. Same goes for if you want to ask for advice on maybe some teching out of decks I've covered, or anything else that uh, you might want to have some insight into as far as other decks running around the metagame. Anyway, as now, Spinjotto, signing off.